So let's talk about blood pressure. Now, blood pressure in relation to knowing it for your clients, whether you are working with higher risk clients, i.e. your exercise referral trained, or whether you're working with normal healthy clients, you need to know about your blood pressure classifications. You might go, oh, I need to know that for my exam. Um, you do need to know it for your level three anatomy and physiology exam, so this will be helpful regardless. But you also do need to know about it when you're actually working with your clients. Now, the reason for that is just imagine for a moment that you have somebody sat in front of you and you're doing your blood pressure monitoring on them and then all of a sudden you get these numbers up. You get a systole, you get a diastole and you get these numbers. Now, if you just jot those down and don't really know what they mean, then you could be putting that client at massive risk. So for example, if that client has a raised blood pressure, it is an indicator that they have something else going on inside. They've got a buildup of stressors going on in their body. And the only way we test for that is on that blood pressure. It shows that there's some stressors building up and they're reacting to that in their body. Now, if we go and add another stressor, i.e. exercise, then they're not gonna, potentially, they're not gonna be able to deal with that additional stress, which will result in stroke, heart attack, etc. That's not what we want, especially on our watch as new PTs, exercise referral specialists, whatever the reason is you're doing your anatomy and physiology. So let's dial into these categories. Now, just to clear up the first initial one that you really need to know about when you're working with clients, there is one clear rule of thumb. Now that rule of thumb is that 120 to 140 on the systole is classed as an acceptable level. Uh, that's your normal or healthy. And then on the diastole, it's 70 to 90. So remember, that's about a 20 gap on there. So 120 to 140, with 70 to 90. There's about 20 difference on both of those. And it can be anywhere between those in order to be classed as a normal, healthy blood pressure. Sound okay? Fantastic. So the next step is to understand some of these other classifications. And there's quite a few. So I'm going to show you a table. Uh, there you go, you should be able to see that quite nicely. Now, in that table, um, you'll notice that there is some gaps, uh, quite a few different things above 140. So I said 120 to 140 is classed as normal. That does also include high normal, which you can see is 130 to 139. So that's that final 10 on here, 130 to 140 and 85 to 89 on here. So it's that tiny little bit for that high normal. Now those people are still suitable to exercise. They're still okay for you to work with, even if you're not exercise referral trained. So if you're just normal level three PT, then you've got these ones, stage one, stage two, and stage three hypertension. These are your alarm bells are ringing, okay? This means that if you are a personal trainer, not an exercise referral, so you are not exercise referral qualified, then you cannot take somebody whose blood pressure is above 140 over 90. Remember that rule of thumb. Now that means that's a reflection of the stressors that they're dealing with. So an exercise referral specialist will be equipped to be able to adapt and to apply conditions and considerations and contraindications to their current medication, their current blood pressure level, and they're then therefore able to work with those clients. Now they're only able to work with them up to a certain point. So the point that they can work with them, you're at stage one and stage two. Now that spans from 140 to 160. This is your stage one hypertension. And then the diastole is 90 to 99. So that's a 10, a 20 beat difference here and a 10 here. Now on this bit here, some people say, oh, well, they're okay to exercise. They are still classed as having hypertension. So somebody that is not exercise referral qualified should not be working with these guys. There's still something going on. Now, stage two to stage three, this stage two one here, we can work with as well from an exercise referral point of view. That's 160 to 180 over 100 to 109. So Again, we've got this great big span here between 140 and 180 and 90 to 109. Now, they're okay to work with from an exercise referral point of view. 
um, as long as you have a clearance from their doctor and that you're using your normal considerations and contraindications and you're considering those. Now, this stage three hypertension, this is anything over 180 on that systole, milligrams of mercury, and 100, over 110 on the diastole, that means that nobody can work with them. So regardless of whether you're exercise referral qualified or not, that client with the over 180 on systole and over 110 on diastole is not able to exercise. So that means even if you're asking them, that's okay, just go for a daily walk, can't come from your advice. So they are not allowed to do that because that's basically saying they are really severely hypertensive and they need to take measures to bring that back down. If they can bring it back down using medication, etc., then they can start working in relation to exercise. But remember, if they are hypertensive, if they are on medication with either normal or hypertensive uh, blood pressure readings, or if they are hypertensive in terms of stage one or stage two, they need to be with an exercise referral instructor. So um, hopefully that clears a few things up. Um, and really, I would just say try and go through and try and remember these brackets and classifications as much as you possibly can, because they will come up in your exams. And quite often they will ask, is it stage one? Is it high normal? Is it normal? So make sure you know those differences of those categories even if you have a way of memorizing them like for me i know that they go up in 20s on the left hand side i know they go up on 10s on the right hand side and as soon as i'd get into that exam i would just brain dump write that table down and then if i had a question on it i knew i could refer back to it um so yeah make sure you have a little play with those have an explore of how to understand those questions and of knowing that uh, blood pressure reading for your clients. Now, final little question before I leave you, um, and that is, what is the rule of thumb for a working with a normal or healthy client in relation to their blood pressure? What should it be for systole and what should it be for diastole? Pop a comment below. I've mentioned it in this video, so it should be a given, but pop a comment below. Let's see how many of you get it right. Also, pop a little thumbs up, and yeah, make sure you put that comment below, and I'll speak to you soon. Take care, bye.